one of us. He returned from his journeys with a new alphabet to show us, gifts for everyone, and the bad news that he was being followed for stealing some cows. How was he supposed to know that they were sacred cows? One died before he could give it back. He returned the rest, but it didn't matter. He wasn't forgiven, so he ran. He learned how to use disguises, and he faked his own death twice. But still he was pursued by a man whose face he had only seen from a distance. After a few months, he ran out of energy and returned home, where he was always considered a bit off, charming at times, but restless and a bit off. What can we do to protect him? We're working on it. Whatever his failings, he's one of us. What am I missing? In my travels, I was stabbed and woke up with tubes coming out of my abdomen, which, were covered, which was covered with scars. The doctors tried to explain the situation, but my grasp of their language was tenuous at best. One night, the nurses huddled around the radio, and the news, whatever it was, was bad. The nurses were quiet, and one grabbed her bag and ran away. The next day, there was one doctor. The day after that, no doctors. I was feeling pretty good, so I slipped out of the hospital and out of the country, not that anyone was trying to stop me. I burned my papers after I crossed the border. I made my, made my way home, and today, I met with the doctor and asked him what organs, if any, I was missing. He looked so tired. He sighed and asked if I was feeling okay. I told him I felt great. And he said, in that case, it doesn't matter. He told me to stay sober and try to avoid a pre-war mentality. I started to ask him which war he was talking about, but I could tell he was busy. So I said thanks and extended my hand. He looked at it in a curious way. Then he shook it reluctantly. I suddenly remembered that we had stopped shaking hands in our country years ago, and I had picked up the habit in my travels. Sometimes I get the feeling that I've spread myself a little thin. <laughs> Thanks. This last one is the consulate. <clears throat> For some reason, the consulate of a small country has stayed open in our city. All the other consulates left as our city became less and less important. The people from the consulate walk around the city taking notes. No one trusts them, but they're very friendly. They love our tea, which we couldn't do without, and our music, which I find boring. They say they value its simplicity. Foreigners are rarely allowed into their country, which is frozen much of the year. Their great hall of records and patterns is said to be enormous and they have more consulates than any other country on earth. They have no military and don't seem to have a lot of money, but they have more than us. Right now, our city is full of disdain for the new century and all its losses, but our past centuries weren't that great either. Everyone points to the future and everything it may bring. The strange people from the consulate have watched hundreds of countries rise and fall and change in different ways. I asked one of them to tell me our future. And he said, your future will be interesting, but you won't see it coming. Thanks a lot.